Hi, I'm Nathan Cole of natesviolin.com, and today we're going to talk about pitch, intonation, and how to improve it. Now, Noah Kagayama from the Bulletproof Musician, he and I were just talking about multi-sensory learning, and it reminded me of a, a certain practice technique that I've used for a while, and so he asked me to make a video about it. Um, multi-sensory learning, we do it all the time when we play because we're always touching the instrument and hearing the sounds that come from it. But often it's easy to get stuck in a rut. We use the same senses all the time and in the same combinations. And so anytime you can bring new senses in or use them in new ways, you're going to be able to make changes more quickly and have them stick for longer, which is really the whole point of our practicing. Um, so the practice technique I like to call total recall and my great teacher, Dan Mason, showed this to me way back when, probably around the time the movie came out in the early 90s. Um, it is named after an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, Total Recall. Great movie where he plays an ordinary man, an ordinary citizen. It's, it's a little hard to believe, but anyway, he plays a, a boring guy and he wants a more exciting life. So he hears about this company, I think it's called Recall Incorporated or something like that and they advertise the implanting of memories. So you can take a vacation without actually going on vacation. You just lie down and they implant the memories in your head and then when you wake up, supposedly it's, it's just like you've been on the vacation because you remember having been there. So he asks, the Schwarzenegger character asks, um, how real does it seem? And the salesman says, as real as anything in your head. And I love that because it's, all about what we do when we practice. Um, the salesman also says, think about every vacation you've taken, what's the same about every vacation? And it's you. No matter where you go in the world, you're there, you're the same person. And it's a little like that when we play. What's the same about every piece and every passage that you play? It's still you. But what if you could implant different pitch better intonation into your head, then maybe you'd play better in tune. Um, so that's what this is all about. Um, let's, take, let's take the last movement of the Beethoven Concerto because I want to open some new pathways. Um, most of us use a, a fingering that's on the G string, right? Something like... Uh, And that can be treacherous, especially to play it up to tempo. And, you know, you practice it in various ways. Hopefully you're creative about it, but a lot of the time uh, you're just trying to fix things. And after a while you iron in some mistakes and it gets a little stuck. Now your brain is going to resist new information as long as you keep practicing the same way. You're just touching the instrument, hearing the sounds, your, your brain resists. So to open those new pathways, you need to bring in some other senses. Um, before we quite go there, one practice technique that I often use is simply to play an easier fingering. And this is going to relate to what we're about to do with this keyboard you see here. So instead of going up the G string, I could play... <laughs> And that's certainly easier to get in tune. And then hopefully when I went back to the, the real fingering, my brain would remember the pitch I just heard and I might alternate back and forth between those two fingerings. That's a great thing to try, but it still involves the same senses in the same combinations. You're touching the violin and hearing the sounds that you make on the violin. So, we're going to turn to the keyboard here to start the implant. And, uh, you know, the easiest thing to do is simply to play it on the keyboard. I'm no kind of pianist, but at least I can handle this. Now, we, we won't debate at the moment whether the, the keyboard is the absolute final word as to pitch, but if you can play right in tune with the keyboard, you're doing great. So let's make that... Uh, a starting goal at least. Um, so that's certainly a great thing to do. And then it's 
somewhat effective. Um, it's still the sense of touch with the keyboard, but it's a new way of creating sound. It's not the same old playing it on the violin. So it's a little bit better and you alternate back and forth between the keyboard and that, that's a good thing. Now, um, to make it more interesting, we're going to add voice to the mix. Now, if, if I'm not a pianist, I'm definitely not a singer, no kind of singer. You might want to do this in the, in the comforts of your own home, but it is important. I really encourage you to try it. By the way, if you don't have a keyboard around, you know, this is not a real piano. This is just a little MIDI keyboard that I've plugged into my computer. You can get those for very cheap, and uh, it's, it's great to have at your fingertips here. So now I'm going to play the Beethoven notes while singing them. And as I said, I'm not a singer, but I'm going to take the time to, to refine my pitch a little bit. Really try to be in unison with the keyboard, so pardon my uh, voice here. <clears throat> That's a tough interval for me. Etc. Take the time to refine that pitch. I haven't done that yet with this piece. But get as close as you can so that you have a little facility in your voice and in the hand using the keyboard. Now, we're, we're just starting the implant. This is, uh, we're, we're just getting started here. The next step is to finger the notes on the violin while playing them on the keyboard. Now this is the start of something really special because I'm no longer hearing the violin sound. That may or may not be easy for you to do, but do it slowly just as I've done. And I should say that when you do that, you don't need to try for the right pitches in the left hand here. Don't try to play it in tune. Just keep your hand relaxed and natural. Use the fingering that you'd like to use, but trust that the keyboard is handling the pitch for you. So now this keyboard pitch is being implanted into your head as belonging to your hand. Now I could go right to, to trying it with the bow, but there's uh, still one more step to do, and that's to do all three together. This is really what I call the total recall technique. All three together, finger on the instrument, play it on the keyboard, and sing at the same time. This is very difficult for most people. Bum, ba, yum, ba, dum, bum, ba, yum, ba, etc. And if I were doing this not for this video, I would take more time and really try to get it um, as close as I can, my voice, the keyboard, matching up with the fingers, and finally to play it the real way. I may get instant results. I may need to repeat this a few times, but... That feels so easy and natural. I'm not even worrying about the pitch. I'm almost hearing that keyboard pitch as I play it. As I say, most people find some kind of immediate and startling result. May not be perfect, but you work over time to refine this. This total recall technique for me has worked wonders in unblocking some really stuck passages, ones that really resisted getting in tune. So I urge you to try it. Remember that process is first play it on the keyboard, then sing it with the keyboard, finger it on the violin while playing the keyboard, and finally all three at once, fingers on the violin, keyboard, and singing. Finally, I'd uh, encourage you to watch the movie. Go out and, uh, well, don't go out and rent it. Stream it somehow. Uh, Total Recall, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, directed by Paul Verhoeven. And in the movie, as you'll see, uh, something goes horribly wrong with the implant, and you can't really tell whose memories are real, his own or, or the implants. 
and uh, I'm pretty sure nothing horrible is going to happen to you implanting this uh, great keyboard pitch inside your brain. So give it a try. Let me know how it works here in the comments and uh, check out the rest of my articles at natesviolin.com and go see Noah at the Bulletproof Musician.